for the November um, episode of our Purity series. And the topic that we're looking at today um, of newness is something that each one of us loves to experience. Who doesn't love something new, whether it's a new pair of shoes, a new job, a new house, uh, something new somehow refreshes us and makes us feel um, a little bit of um, anticipation of a new chapter. And yet we don't always welcome change in the same way. Sometimes we resist change because we think maybe it could be change for the worse. But each one of you here um, joining us on our call today is here because you were prepared to try something new. You reached a point in your life and you came across um, this meditation and you thought, OK, I'll try something new and see where it has led to a whole new life opening up for you. So I very much um, hope that Brother Marcelo is going to be able to share with us um, some of the wisdom that he has um, acquired over his 40 plus years practicing this this path of of meditation. Um, and so, Brother Marcelo, a very warm welcome from me as well. It's lovely to have you with us. Thank you, Philippa. Um, thank you. Well, Dallas, I was there many years ago, and it's nice to to be with you again, even so it's not in person, but at least subtly, we are all together. Thank you very much We're for the, all together. the invitation. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that um, Jyoti Ben didn't mention in her introduction is that you work very closely with all the translators um, within the Brahma Kumaris, and this purity series is always translated. So a special shout out this week to all the translators. And we totally salute and honour the work that you do. And I apologise when I get excited and speak too fast, because I know that makes your job even harder. But Marcelo, if you could maybe just give us some insight into the work that the translators do, and what kind of a job you feel they do, and how much it has changed over the years that you've been involved with the service of translation in the Brahma Kumaris. It's interesting. When I came to Brahma Kumaris, I just spoke one language. And uh, so, so it was interesting for me to see others translating something from another language, another culture, because it's not only words, it's the culture, it's the attitude, it's many things. And into Portuguese, that was the language I used to speak at that moment, the only one. And now I'm on the other side, so I provide translation, or at least I help translators to feel better. I, I think the, the challenges are, are big, particularly because the ones who are listening, the ones who receive the service, they are more, um, how can I say, they have more criteria. <laughs> so. So they, they don't accept any translation. They don't accept bad quality, which is good. It's good. But that, that means translators, they have to do double work in terms of their thoughts and, and really find the best word. Sometimes it's not the same word, but the best word will be, will be the one that will reach people and will touch people much better. So is it one of those things that the more you do it, the better you get at it, would you say? Yes, yes. But the change is big. I mean, and just an example. Beforehand, you could translate, um, let's say, milk. You could translate as, as water, liquid, you know, just an example, right? But nowadays, people, they have more experience, the ones who are receiving translation. So the challenge is that you, you, you have to be more aware. You have to be more aware of the, the words that are being used, how they are being used. You are from the UK, so if you speak about some things, maybe in the United States meaning one thing, in your land means another thing. Uh, so the translators, they have to do all those shifts internally in their minds. 
and provide the best translation to other people. You know, it's a very interesting work because I think when we interpret something, what we are doing is that we are adding something from our own experience into that. So the translators, they have to do something more. They have to be whatever they speak. They have to really feel whatever they speak. Especially those like me, we are not professional translators. So you have to really feel, you have to really grasp and understand the, the greatness of that to do a proper translation. And thank you very much for the translators who are today here. I Definitely. hope you speak okay. <laughs> I know that you, you you say sometimes that the the accent of the person speaking can make it harder if it's a, a, a tricky accent and you can't quite catch the words because they're saying them slightly differently. Um, so there's issues like that you have to deal with as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. The accent... You know, the accent is proper from, from the place, you know, where the person was born and brought up. So, of course, when, when you are talking in another, another place, they don't match. You know, they don't work so well. And, um, and some people, they are easy with accents. I have more difficulty. I, I really struggle a little bit with other people's accent when they are not... They are not used. I'm not used to that accent. I take time to understand even a simple word or two words. So I remember many years ago, I was just starting to learn English. So I was daring to listen directly from English. And Dadi Kumarka, Dadi Prakashmani, she was the director of Brahma Kumaris at that point. And she said that they were buying 10 tons of of, uh, of you know, for heating system and all these, these things. But I understood only the 10 tons of coal. But I understood it was 10 tons of cow. So, so of course. So 10 tons of cows, that means how many cows? And why so many? Where are they going to put them? And so it took time for me to realize that it was because of the accent. I couldn't, well, my English was not that bad, too. So it was both sides. But other people also understood the same thing as myself. Yeah, they're talking. How possible they are buying so many cows here? You know, so much milk. <laughs> the people who were listening to the translation must have thought that um, she was going to start a dairy farm or something. Um, something I can like imagine that. there was there was some some laughter when they realized the the mistake. But you know, in terms of newness, before we we leave the topic of translation, there is newness within the world of translation with Google Translate and the AI software doing translation. Do you anticipate in time that the work of the translators will be replaced by these things? I don't think fully replaced, but I think uh, even now, translators, they are helped by that. For instance, the person who translates text from English to Spanish, the main person who translates from English to Spanish in Latin America, Google Translate or any other tool, she just copy, paste, and that. And she doesn't check many times. And I forget sometimes to check, and there are some very funny things. But they are improving and improving and improving. So especially text, this is extremely common nowadays. So you just copy and paste, and but you have to check. Don't trust the AIs blindly. But in terms of voice, it's a little more complicated. And the accent is a challenge. I just give an example of my mobile phone, my cell phone. So when I speak, I give a vocal, verbal order. In English, it understands almost all the time. But in Spanish, most of the time, it thinks I'm speaking Portuguese. And when I try to speak in Portuguese, it thinks it, I'm trying to speak in Spanish. So, it's, so the accent is, is kind of a challenge. But I think in the future, um, what's happening now in, in our headquarters there in, 
Mount Abu in Gensarovar, you know, especially, there is a new system of translation. And our hope, because we, have, we still have to test it fully, but our hope is that a class is being given there and that class can be translated to Spanish from anywhere in the world. So it's not necessarily someone there. So on one hand, those who go there and who can't speak English, they will be benefited because someone in Spain or Latin America, they can translate it. And so they don't miss it. On the other hand, those from outside, they can get the translation right now. So they are very, very much into improving translation. And I think the AIs will help a lot one day. I think my dream is, especially videos, that's so complicated because you have to translate, you have to check. It's a lot of work. But in videos, now we are using a self-translation system, no? In some platforms. Uh, so especially those platforms where the subtitles in English are available, then it's very easy to translate. And sometimes may, funny things emerge there. Now there is Daddy Janki, our another director of Brahma Kumaris, and her name is the same name of a very famous singer in Latin. It's the same pronunciation, not the writing, but the pronunciation is the same. So the of course the self-translation always always translate into the, the name of the singer. So there are many things that have to be improved. But, the, well, the I think the future is looking quite good for translators. It will be much easier in the future to translate because I can hear you, Philippa, speaking, for instance. I can hear that an AI can translate for me. And what I do, I just use my criteria to change whatever I have to change, and I give others. That will be probably one step that will happen in the future. Let's see. That's very um, interesting that somebody could go to the headquarters and even if there's no one at um, the headquarters at the same time as them to translate for them, they can still get a translation from somebody in, in another country. And presumably that means that wherever you are, you will be able to listen into that class mm -hmm. and listen into that translation. So even if you can't travel to the headquarters, you can still join in the classes wherever you are. Um, so this is all this is all something new, isn't it? And yeah. you know yeah. we, we tend to think of newness as progress and um often it is, but it isn't always. And yet we will still try and seek out something new and i i wonder what you feel is the reason why um the soul craves the experience of something new what is that about that's something that well you you wrote to me yesterday no so i, I was thinking about that um i think there are many possibilities that people look for something new First one, the obvious one, is our own growth as people. And uh, life is like an uh, adventure. It's a human adventure. In an adventure, you always look for something new, right? You always look for something different, uh, a new taste, a new image, a new thing that you can see, some new noises, sounds. So you, you look that. That gives a variety to life. That gives some spice in life. So life doesn't become boring or life doesn't become too challenging also, you know? So because there is something new, uh, even when life is challenging. I was just seeing one of the most famous singer of, of Colombia now, Carol G. She's quite famous. And she gave a free concert for the woman in jail. So they were showing the concert and it was free for them only. They were extremely happy. Those, those women there were in jail whose lives are totally limited by these two blocks. Many of them, they are mothers, probably most of them. And so that was a little novelty that came into their lives and, and, and gave a new, a new shine. The other reason is, however, 
is that there were many thoughts about that about 10 years, 15 years ago, about the fact that people, they don't, when they get satisfied, the next time they need something different to get that satisfaction. Uh, you can use terms like serotonin or or whatever term you can know from whatever aspect is. But I remember from sales and marketing, they used to tell that. Uh, they used to tell, be careful when you offer a special, special thing to someone, because that person, they will always expect that. So there is a supermarket in, in Europe, I don't remember which country. And, and the guy was saying, for about three or four years, he has offers every day. So he didn't stop to offer something new. And he said, probably he tried to stop, but he said, as soon as he stops, people stop coming there. So for some reason, people, they are not satisfied in the world. There is like a hollow inside. There is a something, and they try to put something there, you know, but they can't. So they they look these, and this is good. Oh, yeah. The series with Philippa there about purity, great, wonderful. But in two months, they say, okay, well, so I try something else. I try something different. And I'm not happy with all of that. Um, and that's not good. The first type of novelty is okay. It's an adventure. You're always looking for something new. But the second type of adventure of uh, newness is that you are trying to fill yourself with the wrong material many times. Um, this lecture is a good material, <laughs> but other things out there, they are not so good. And they can be deceiving. They can show you something that's not part of who you are, really. I mean, we, we live in a, in a culture that is almost obsessed with newness. So, you know, if you have a pop star, it's it's his latest song. It's um, with food. It's a new, improved recipe um, with an upload. It's 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 a new upload from from your favorite YouTuber. It's um, a new design. It's it's new, new, new. Everything has got to be new. And it's almost like 10 minutes old is already no longer new. It's got to be up to the second new. Um, and I, I was reflecting on this um, when we spoke as well. And I wonder if there is quite a link actually between newness and purity, because when something is new, it's in its original state. It's first made and it doesn't have any defects. It's pure, it's untouched, it's unadulterated, it's not been, it's not had time to have other things mixed within it. And so this newness somehow awakens a feeling within us of that pristine, fresh, out of the box, new feel that reflects our own inner purity. And if you think like of a new baby, a newborn baby, who doesn't want to see a newborn baby because they're they're fresh in this world they have got nothing that is um any trace of any any sorrow any negativity they're just brand new baby and everyone loves to be in the company of a brand new baby but then by the time they're two and three doesn't have that same feeling what, what would you say about that Marcelo? well um there is, I think the purity, as you say, of the newness, when something is new, is authentic. It is something, use the word fresh, no, it's something different. So you are open and uh, you want to try it a little bit. Probably it's, it's what happens in the places where there is a snow. The first snow, oh, so beautiful, so nice. Two months old, it is snow. Oh, it's so bad, so horrible. <laughs> How can I go to work today? It's so... <laughs> uh, 
And same thing happens when you move to another country, you know, first year, everything's marvelous. It's wonderful. Second year, third year, fifth year. But that's again, the same problem. There is a hollow inside of the self. There is a, an emptiness. And the novelty, they give you hope, which is good. They cheer you up. It's excellent. You do need, we all need some cheering up. It gives you some many good things, but it can't feel that emptiness. You know? Um, and when we talk about purity, is something very different. Because when you purity, purity, even when it's sold, and I remember Daddy Jenke, who was a very fresh 80 years old, 90 years old. Yes. She did 100 allow, years old. <laughs> 100 years old. She, well, when she was 100 years, she allowed us to call her old. <laughs> until until 90 years old, she couldn't, she didn't allow us to call her an old woman at all. You know, she had all that energy, all that power, all that thing because of the purity, you know, because of the energy. On the other hand, on the other hand, you see some young people <laughs> out there, you know. All this, yeah. And, and that freshness is not that present. So when you talk about purity, you can have something very old. You can have something that's antiquated, you know, square, okay? But, but they give you the sensation of newness. I, can I give you an example from India? Uh, it's, I hope, well, I won't mention names, so no problem, I guess. Anyway, I went to a place uh, in India, very nice. I like that place. And they wanted me to know, to see a, a temple. They insisted, insisted, insisted. So I went there. I went to see that temple. Oh, it was so beautiful. All green, you know, all pasture. Uh, it didn't look like uh, temples as we know. So you went to the area. It was like a park. And the temple itself was made of gold. They they were changing the, the, the bricks to gold or, I don't know, if pure gold or at least gilded there. But it was not nice. I look at that and I said, I don't know, I, I don't like. The, the nature here is nice. It's extremely clean. Oh my God, it was so clean. Then... I went to another temple, and that temple was different. It was not dirty, but it was old, very old, made of stones, rocks. And that temple I found so beautiful. And out of the two guru, the two swamis, I, I met the, the second one, the, the guru of the, the old temple. And I met him in a program. So it was a function of Brahma Kumaris. I was there standing. And then this old man came. And someone tried to touch his feet. What he did was he, he bent himself. He didn't allow the person to touch his feet. In fact, he gave a hug and pulled the person up with the hug. And he was smiling so much. I saw the guru. I said, this is a holy man. This is a real holy man. And he was the one in that old temple, which, which made my heart feel very good. So that's the energy. Even so, the first temple was beautiful, gold, everything clean, everything good. The energy is not there. You know, the substance, the, the, the depth of purity was not present. So novelty, only for novelty, many times doesn't touch your heart. It can touch your head, your eyes, your ears, your tongue, but doesn't touch your heart. So, But something with depth, it doesn't matter if they are new or old, they will touch the heart. And I think that's the most important thing nowadays, right? I mean, there are too many things that touch the head. 
you know, someone was wanting some rest from his work. So he wanted to go to the headquarters of Brahma Kumaris. I said, if you are tired, just go for a cruise, you know, in the Caribbean. And he went to the Caribbean. <laughs> if you're going to a spiritual place, don't go just because you're tired. Just go because you want some objective, something really clear for you. This is actually quite a deep point, I think, that we're we're sharing here because in a way what we're saying is the feeling of newness actually comes from a state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's not about any physical, material newness. It's 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 about a new state of consciousness. And you know, people are craving this feeling of newness and they're looking for it in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. Actually, newness will, the feeling of newness will come when we create a new moment for ourselves because every moment is a new moment. You know, we can leave the mistakes of yesterday in the past. We can leave the arguments, the upset. That's all in the past. This moment is a, is a new moment. And you you mentioned Daddy Janky there, and and I I remember being very struck, um, being with her. She was she was in her hundreds. She was possibly a hundred and two something like that, and she was asking what the program was for the day, and they were saying, okay, we're doing this, and she's like, so much enthusiasm, so much like, okay, um, today we're going to be doing this, and. It was as if it was the first time she was doing this. She'd been doing this for decades. And yet her, what she brought to it was this like fresh, like a child in a, in a being let loose on an adventure park. For her, this was a new day, a new moment, a new service program. And she had so much enthusiasm for it. And I thought, wow. At the age of 100, having done pretty much the same thing every day for decades, to bring that feeling of freshness and newness to that new moment, you know, I, I thought I'm never I'm never going to do anything with with the consciousness of, oh, no, not this again. That's going to be boring, you know. Really inspiring. I, I don't know if you if you noticed any of those moments, but it that certainly struck me. Oh, yes, yeah, so many times, you know. The, um, and as you say, it's it's a newness when you have the purity comes from, from inside my mind. Uh, I am a person who has the tendency to look for new things. You know, I, I like new things. I like uh, new words in language. I like to see new stories, um, when, when things are too repetitive, to uh, you come into a routine, sometimes I just unclick, I just disconnect from that, you know. And many years ago, I realized that, that the newness is not really in something being new, as because it was not there before. Or well, it's something that you didn't know before. The newness come from my eyes, from my perception. Um, I see people getting married and getting divorced. I see people, uh, they can't live with each other because they are too many years. Oh, they are trying to leave their company because they are already five years. Five years. It's a long time. It's an eternity. You know? And and yet, I mean, I have to be in this body, I don't know how many years, maybe 80, maybe 90, you know, and uh, I have to to work with these hands. And, and the newness is not that I can't hear well now because I'm getting old. Uh, that's not new. <laughs> the newness is that I'm always ready for a new adventure, something different, but out of the the day to day life, you know, we create an energy from from every single day. We don't try to to improve the things that are so good. The improvement comes from my perception. 
I think that's the magic of purity. If someone is really pure, they'll be amazed with anything. They will be able to find joy sitting down somewhere and just, and they'll find joy. If someone doesn't have that purity develop themselves, you can give the, him a new car for Diwali, you know? Uh, you can give him five, five invitations for weddings, you know, this season. You can give the, him a ticket, or a first-class ticket, you know? Yet, the, her satisfaction, his satisfaction will be just short time. Very quickly, they will lose that, and they will miss it. And they will feel, well, it's, it's over, you know? It's like eating a very good lasagna. When it's over, it's over. It was tasty, wonderful, excellent. But the vibration, the company for the people, um, even the maybe the landscape or the horizon you are looking when you are eating that, the thoughts you are having, that gives that novelty something special, something great. I, I really feel that we are creating a world that everyone is looking for something new, but very few people are trying to be new. And when you have work, you work on your purity, you are trying to be new yourself. So can you talk us, because you've been doing this for um, 42 years, this meditation practice. Um, and, you know, other people, like you say, they've been in a relationship for a long time, in a job for a long time. Um, you know, you get up early, you do your meditation, you have to make your food, you have to, you know, blah, blah, every day, the same thing. What can we practically do if we're feeling stuck in a rut and and we just want something new to enliven us without necessarily changing everything in our life? How do we bring in that feeling of newness in a way that re-engages us and reconnects us? And I, I suppose I am thinking of being on the spiritual path because many people do get tired. And they find that it's an effort. And initially they had really good experiences and then the experiences stop coming and they think, oh, you know, this is hard. I might just try something new and go and do something different. Give us some tips at that point of feeling the need for something new, how to re-engage with, with this spiritual practice. Yes, of course. I, I went through that, so I can I can talk from experience. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, if you can change the routine, change a little bit. You know, not something dramatic, but you can, for instance, I used to change the route from my home to the work. You know, it was a small change, very small. So sometimes I used to go through one road, other times I used to go through another road. So it's very small, but it gives a little, little change. Second thing is a little more complicated. Um, change your, your outlook, your perception, your perspective, your approach to things. For instance, you are talking about cooking for the self every day. So, okay, so you have to cook for yourself every day. And maybe you cannot change the food every day, you know? But you can do some tricks with your mind that we learn through meditation. You can think that, okay, I'm going to cook something that will make me happier. Or I'll cook something today to make me peaceful. I mean, you can just work on your mind and you can do that. And the third thing, well, meditate. <laughs> Meditation, even so everything around you is a routine. When you sit down with yourself, even that is a routine. Inside the routine, you have so many possibilities, you know. 
today especially my meditation in the morning was so diversified you know so a little exotic sometimes meditation can be very exotic too and you can try many many states you can try many forms many ways of seeing of uh, seeing real, uh, reality in a different way so if you are in the routine and you cannot change probably is the best way learn to meditate uh, and in the meditation every day look for something different and I'll add a fourth thing something different try to serve try to be a volunteer somewhere um, there is always some time everybody has five minutes half an hour, one hour after COVID everybody is, has become an expert in Zoom or whatever they have we, they have very good uh, cell phones. They have everything very good, excellent. So be a volunteer because every day will be different if you're volunteering somewhere, you know. Every day, every person you attend, every person you talk to, they will be different too. So I think these four things people can do. We had in our, our morning lesson today, um, because one of the lovely things about the, the Brahma Kumaris is that we we all hear, wh whichever country we're in, wherever we are in the world, we all read the same um, words of inspiration every morning. And it, it gives a lovely feeling of being connected, that we've all shared that same experience and we're all thinking about the same thing. And uh, one of the the lovely points from from the the morning lesson today was that it's it's no good just having all the knowledge in your head and being a master of all the knowledge. You have to experience it. And if you're not experiencing it, really, what is the point of having the knowledge? And it made me reflect that that actually that the experience, the thing that the, the soul is really craving is is experience. And when you have a wonderful experience in meditation, it feels like it's taken you to a new state, to a new a new part of yourself, and it and it freshens up and enlivens the whole of your outlook and the whole of your day, because you've had new thoughts, new experience has come to you, and you could offer anything, but you would always take experience over anything else because that is a treasure that sits within you and um, sparkles um, and, and brings light to, to the whole of your life. And so, you know, this, this newness, I think what you're saying is bring that into your meditation practice. And if you, if you're having good new experiences, that will give you everything that you're looking for. That's true. That's true. Um, I mean, people, they buy objects, but what they want is experience. What they want is the feeling, is the sensation. It's not the object in itself. It's just an example, just a thing. So novelty can be going to London tomorrow. Novelty can be uh, watching this new movie that's coming. Novelty can be that. But in fact, what people really want is the experience that they get from those things. When I, especially when I start to live in a, here in Colombia, um, well, I, I don't think I ever had routine in Colombia. <laughs> every, every day is almost different. But there was sometimes, sometimes that things go a little cool down. No? So, so every day is the same and things are the same. During the pandemic, no, every day looked the same. There was the joke about a guy who had seven fish in the aquarium. And he said, I gave to each fish the name of one day of the week. So the person who was with him said, but they all look equal. He said, exactly. Yeah, because that's what many people were feeling during the pandemic. And, and yet, every day was something different. You know, there was another lecture, another program, you know, uh, New York was organizing many things, the New York Center of Brahma Kumaris, they organized so many interesting things. 
uh, we are trying new new dishes, you know? We are trying different ways of seeing reality. But we are not doing that because we are bored. We just, it, it was coming from inside. You know, that's the different thing, probably. When people have purity, the novelty comes from inside, not outside. The lack of purity makes, made, makes people to look for something good there, outside, out of their grasp many times. And when they don't get, they get bored, they get upset, they they get let they feel let let being let down. No, they they didn't receive what they want. But the feeling with purity is that it comes from here, it comes from the self, you know, and that's why it doesn't matter if you have every single day the same. And if in one month I look at Philippa and she has the same plant there, the same light there, you know, everything is the same. It doesn't matter because my purity is coming from here. So everything is new and fresh. Maybe we cannot have that every day, but at least for the general things in life, we can do that. We can do that. Beautiful. Just That's such such a lovely answer, Marcelo. Really, really, I'm really appreciating that. Um, and thank you for. We're getting some questions coming in. If you would like to ask um, Brother Marcelo a question, do please put it in the chat box. Um, and we've got one here. Um, I want to ask how we would practice purity in technological noise. We get distracted every second by texts. Yeah social media that make us addicted to gadgets. Yeah. And, you know, it is true, this whole thing of newness within technology, we're wanting the newest iPhone, we're wanting the latest app, we're wanting the newest social media post. It's again this cult, this addiction to newness in technology, driving people mad. How do we unhook from that? Well, that's that's quite tricky, and I know it's it's a big problem everywhere. In fact, um, the World Health Organization they have already considered gaming as an addiction. So, gaming is officially an addiction. You know, uh, internet not yet. WhatsApp it should be, but it's not yet. <laughs> YouTube. Another very good <laughs> trying. Uh, in my case, I can give you my own experience because many times, because I come from IT, in fact, my, my distance background is IT and I work with computers very well, cell phones, I, I manage everything very, very well, don't have any problem with that. So many times I have the problem, oh, the cell phone is there, It's it's a an arm distant, it's kind of pulling me. So I remember, I remind myself, what is my objective? What do I really want? What should I do? And um, this morning, just now, I had an experience of, I was talking to someone, we had a doubt. So the name of one person came to my mind. I mean, this person, you can't talk with, with I'll, say, I'll say them, so you don't know if it's a he or she. So you can't talk with them at all. He's, they, they are always busy, no time, etc. So I thought, okay, I'll, let, I'll leave a message. If I leave a message, that message will get lost. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to call. And it was like breaking the, the pattern of always leaving message, leaving message, leaving message. Even here in Colombia, it's very common. You tell a person, did you call so-and-so? Yes, I left a message. So did you call? Yes. Or did you leave a message? I left a message. So you didn't call. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I didn't, yeah. But people, they are already mixing the two meanings of the words in normal, in general. And sometimes, instead of talking to the person via WhatsApp, message, text, everything that 
requires you to be there looking at the, the cell phone or the computer. Just try to call the person. Go there. Take your car, your bicycle. Go there. Talk to them. Do something that breaks it. So check your objective. What do you really want? And second, if there is any other alternative way to get that. And do it. Do it a lot. Okay. I, I think it's it's a transition period of our society that we we didn't have these 10 years ago in this way. It was not like that, you know. So we are still in a transition, we're still learning how to deal with that. So it's it's important to be careful, to be observing, watching yourself very carefully. And uh, whenever you can, avoid, avoid the equipment, the things. I see even people, sometimes I'm in a lecture, I'm present there. The hall is not big, it's quite small. I mean, 80 people small. And uh, for some reason, there is an image in the, on the TV screen. So instead of people looking at me, they are looking at the image. So I say, I mean, I'm here, so look at here, you know. But the habit is formed already. So think about the transition. And yeah, you need to be firm, you need, be, you need discipline, but you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is it is this same addiction to newness, really. You know, it's like I've got a new message. Yes. Um, you know, I've got a new message, you know, that makes you feel important and that someone is reaching out to you and we get our validation. Uh, it is still part of newness. Um, another comment that has come in, um, isn't purity our original nature, Sanskar? Yes. Newness is to give up all acquired habits belonging to this world of five elements. Um, so that's making the separation between the soul in its pure state being uh, the original state and the, and the elements of the world. Um, isn't it like pure rainwater? Um, a drop gets contaminated after touching or flowing on the ground and then gets its original form after transforming into a cloud. Um, we call it fresh rain, but actually it's the same water drop. So the whole cycle of something going through its state of purity, having things mixed in it and becoming impure and then being refreshed and becoming pure in its original form again. And that that whole cycle of purity and impurity that, that happens in the physical world. Um, and of course, the soul goes through its own cycle of purity and impurity as well. Um, but the point of time that we're going through now is 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 the age in which we regain that um feeling of purity. So so in a way this time that we're living through is is a time for for newness, but it's a spiritual newness rather than a newness that we look for in the physical world. I think that's that's really the point that's being made there. Yes, exactly. Um, there are lots of newness in the world. And if you have it, enjoy it. If it's mm. it's there, why not? But mm. but always think what's your objective with that? You know, what, what do you really want from that? Mm. The best pen in the world, I, the most expensive pen they gave me, someone gave me, was so happy. I don't use anymore. <laughs> so but the objective behind. I want to express myself. That changes shape. Now it's in a different way. And I just adapt it. So don't get trapped by the means, by the instruments, by the physical materials around us. Try to be more with the soul and just experience that purity. I think that's what we learned from Daddy Jank. I don't know if you, mm. if you know the story, probably you know, but that junk used to talk about how she had the, the room of Queen Victoria <laughs> there in Oxford retreat place with a palace. It's a palace. And she was using the room that Queen Victoria used one night, just one night. And she said, I don't like it. 
<laughs> it was a beautiful room, but she didn't like. She said she preferred the room in Baba Bavan, which is a house there in London, and the window does face another wall. <laughs> there is nothing interesting there, but she preferred that because she was able to serve many people there. And in fact, she preferred her the first center she lived, which was a very small place in Pune, Pune. It's very small place, very tiny. But she said, there I start serving. I start giving other people something. So even though she was in the best place in the world, many people would think she didn't care much. She loved that small place where so much was able to do. Because it was authentic and yeah. it was true, true to her. Yeah. Beautiful points, Marcelo. We've got so much um, to go away and think about. And um, you've really deepened our understanding of this, this topic of how newness reflects this um, state of pure consciousness. Could we finish with a meditation? And um, if you could just lead us with your thoughts and we'll close with that, that would be great. Thank you, Brother Marcelo. Thanks, no problem. Uh, five minutes? Yeah, lovely. Five minutes. Okay, I know some are new for, for us. I don't know if everybody knows how to meditate. So, so just relax. Relax your body. If you are sitting, you can move a little bit there. You know. And just, just relax. Try to not put all the weight of your body on your feet, just let them be free. And for some minutes, let me go very deep inside. For some minutes, let me experience my own purity. You can see purity as a fresh water flowing freely or a fire burning in the night or the wind, the breeze. The nature your own light, as if you are a small star, and that's your purity, just feel it. Just experience how pure you are. Just feel that purity bringing you out of all the things you live in the day-to-day -day life. It's, it's like a, a door, a gate, and you cross it, and you can see everything in a different way. Your job, house, family, friends, your dreams. You can perceive the best of each of those things or each one of those people. Because when you are pure, you can only see the good, the best, the wonderful. It's natural. And the whole world is there, waiting for me, because I am light, and the world is, is wanting light 
something new, something different. And I give from my own purity a bit of that light, a vibration, a thought. And I give the whole world a taste of their own purity. Because no matter which person is, they all have purity in their hearts. Everyone. So I just ignite other people's lamps, other people's purity. Now, and whenever I feel there are too many things in the world, just remember, let me remember my own purity. Let me remember my own light. Let me feel that light again and give others the same. So now I breathe deeply. Move my hands a little bit, the body. And I come back. And in Brahma Kumaris we say, Om Shanti, I am a peaceful soul. It's a greeting and it's a reminder, Om Shanti. Om Shanti, Marcelo. And thank you so much for sharing your light with us today. It's been really beautiful.